What's going on, people? What's going on? All right. I saw the request from Moors. And I just accepted. So hopefully he could connect. Hopefully there's no problems. Okay. All right. I right, we just waiting on Moors to come on in. Hopefully, there's no issues. All right, so Moors is on. Again, let's try this again. Moles, I see you. I send a request. Hopefully, it works. Hopefully, it works. It says waiting for the art of moles to join. I'm not home right now, people. For the long time viewers of the show, every now and again, you would know that every now and again, I have to. How sit for a friend and take care of their cat. That's where I am right now. And last time we were on, there were some issues with the Wi-Fi. So I hope that's not the case. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to have to go on my page. I don't know why. Technology, people. Technology. I don't know. All right. Hopefully... I don't know. All right, I'll tell you what, Moors. Send me a request, and we'll see if we could do it that way. We'll see if you could, uh, if you hear me. All right, send a request. I see the request. I accepted the request. Let's do this, IG. Bruh. Yo. That that just had me like a like. Oh my god. Game. Oh <sighs> my god. All right. So we here. This is what we're gonna do. We're gonna share it. And you see, we, yeah. we tried coming in early this time and see what happened, fam. Don't blame me playing uh, tell tell that to the other producer. Hey, hey, yeah. I told him to get here early when we start our time. I'm like, yeah, yeah. uh huh. This time right. before time. This shit you is happening. Know. Again. You already know it in the meet in the and afternoon. It's and it's proof. It's proof. It's recorded. We and we and you know here just doing nilly really stuff and like, dude, you just don't understand it. It's like, all right, nah, nah. nah. It's technology, fam. You know what can you do? It's like I don't know what the hell is happening. So what me and Moles are doing right now is that we are sharing the life, and hopefully you are too. Tell a friend. Telemundo. Telemundo? Really, bro? Because, right. you know, tell a friend? No? no? Just no, me? No, tell a, no. Telemundo. Just you, okay? My list is short this week. What the hell? For real? Huh. Extremely short. And I'm and for some reason I'm surprised that mine is long. <laughs> Not that surprised. Hello. All right. It's too early. It's too early. It's too early. I apologize to everybody in here. So if I if I send you a request and you're already in, please ignore it. I apologize. And um, 
But yes, please. So if you see me staring blankly at the screen, and Mo's staring blankly at the screen, that's what we're doing. We're just going through sharing the live, inviting all of our friends and family in. And mine is done. I'm going to go again because this, this seems too damn short now. Like, all man, right. This is, Let me know I'm when gonna... you ready. We're going to start the show. Uh, just give me a couple of seconds. It Let is me just Sunday. How are y'all doing? You know what I mean? How's your how's your your head space? How's your heart space? We care. Yeah, we do. We care a lot. A lot. A lot. And a lot. Uh, boom, boom, boom. Um, okay. Uh, oh, it's the thirty first. Let me change this. Sir. Yo, um, you might go and set up your topic because apparently, you know. Okay. Pin it and stuff because I can't. I will do that. Yeah. This is season two, episode five. Oh, all right. Be on time. Yeah. It's going to be short this week for some reason. This is weird. Monumental moments. Just ignore me, people. I'm just here typing in the topic. Okay. Mm, boom. All right. Boom. Boom. All right. All right. Peace. Oh, I see a Malcolm filling in the house. <laughs> yeah. 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 We yeah. here, man. We yeah. we are yeah. here. Okay, I right, see. I see the roast thing started early. Tracy said, "Like your bread, trying to make what the hell it is? Like your bread? What? I don't know what I'm saying. Or maybe beard? I think you meant to say beard, but we all know Tracy's dyslexic. So. You early? We, 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 we early. all know what's going on. We all know what's going on. You ready, fam? As you ready? Let's do this. Bring it in." What's up, people? We are here. It is Sunday, and Zion is in the building. Let's get that. Let's get this beautiful, sweet intro music, courtesy of my boy, Mike Colston, <coughs> a.k.a. German Artist. Let's go. Oh. 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 This is Zion. Welcome, people. The gates of Zion are open. I am Sean Ali, aka MD Guys. Speak precise. They say he's the second coming, like Jesus. What? No. I want to thank mm. y'all for being here with me as always. Is my co host Julian Mosley, aka Mos. You know what it is. I didn't need to go through all that long intro and stuff. You know who I am already by now. And it's Sunday. We are here with another episode of the Zion Variety Show. Uh, the Zion Variety Show is a, a pop culture IG live show that came about from the monthly meetings that the Zion group held. But because COVID is still out here doing COVID things, trying to have a hot girl summer all year long. All Bring year long. Home. All year, fam. It's, 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 it's enough now. You know what I mean? Like you, you know, like it's almost like you thinking they needed some, some, some special help when they was young. You know what I mean? They had some bad moments in their life. They took a wrong turn, and now they're just out here wilding out still. And you wilding, just wilding, wilding, wilding. Just want to talk to them. Just want to say, listen, you don't have to do this. But because of COVID, we can't have the monthly meetings anymore in person. But this is a way for us to come to you weekly and still have the same zaniness that we will have with the physical meetups. So thank you all for being here. Before we get started, a little, even before we really get into it, we have to give a disclaimer. 
because here on the show, me and Moles, we tend to get a little rowdy sometimes, you know? Uh, so we should let you know that the following show does contain, contain traces of uh, silliness, rudeness, uh, shenanigans, sexual innuendos, um, and, and strong only, cause Especially from Sean, it's actually in the rentals because apparently he does love it. Just saying. It's, it's, it's part of my nature. I can't help it at this point. Um, and uh, so, so the views expressed in this little show that we do aren't reflective of Zion as a whole, but they're just coming from the brain of me and Bulls. And uh, we just we just having a little fun. You know what I mean? Don't take us too serious, all right? But uh, today, we are going to have a serious moment because we have a special guest in the house, Moles. We are going to be blessed with the appearance of Ariel Johnson, the mm -hmm. owner of Amalgam Comics and the Comics and Coffee Shop, Coffee House. Is it Amalgam Comics and Coffee House or Amalgam Coffee House and Comics? I apologize in advance, Ariel. It's an amazing place. It's a coffee shop and a comic book store all in one, fam. Yeah. All in one. Only, only, only y'all could do it because, I don't know. I don't it's, know like having, it's like having a sleeping pill made of peanut butter and jelly. You know what I mean? Just, it's just it comes together beautiful. Just me? I'm the only one that would take that pill? Whatever. Yes. Aside from having our incredible guests on the show, uh, we're going to have our usual segments. Uh, we have stuff like our Phantom Zone segment, uh, mm -hmm. fan favorite. We have What's on the Table, where we show you some art. We have um, our Lit Pick with Antonio Pomeris. We have uh, other news with Seth Dulce. Uh, we got a bunch of stuff. And we also have a discussion segment, which we are about to get into now. And you'll see it pinned. The topic is pinned there at the bottom. Monumental Moments in Comments. And mm -hmm. why I really wanted to do this topic most was because I feel that it, we have to reflect the prestige of our guest, somebody like Ariel Johnson, who is a, no, I think we can safely say an icon in the comic book world, right? Right. What she did was monumental. And it made me start thinking about all the things in comic books that were monumental to me, right? Okay. Um, and we're going to have a little discussion about it, and we want the people to join in, too. What were some monumental moments for y'all? What were some things in comic book history that really moved you, right, for all my comic book fans out there? Whether it was the creation of a certain character, um, a certain story arc, maybe it was just something that happened to the comic book industry as a whole. What was some of the moments for you? Moses? I want to start it off. You want to start it off? Let's start it off for you, man. I, what's I what's know. a what's a moment in comic books for you? <clears throat> a moment, um, an issue. I trying to remember, but the issue where when my need to rip the skeleton. Fam, I didn't. I can. Honestly, Ooh. that was something Wait, I can't even about fathom. When he ripped out Wolverine skeleton. Yes. Oh, no, the, oh, the, the animatium the, the the of the skeleton, yeah. right. Of right. the skeleton. Yeah. And then somehow, then after a few a few issues afterwards, Wolverine was feral for a, a quite a while, but the yeah. point where as that you would never think the impossible could have happened. Like, he, well, almost died, but, you know, almost not come when it comes to Wolverine. Right. But it left him, like, damaged for a while. He had the, the skeleton claws because you thought that the animatium was actually... Um, part of his um, the animantium, sorry. This clause was part right. of his animantium, sorry. Right, and right, right. For a long time, he re -ch they changed that myth and obviously that was that was far, from, far from the truth, whereas that he had popped these claws that were actually born claws. I was like, yo, this mm -hmm. is crazy. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that had me, uh, so I was like, yo, that's some crap. But afterwards, he get it back, um, put it list and even take him the same amount of pressure to actually put it in that that ticket out so hey is wolverine he's he's the he he do what he does best um uh, here's my thing right what made this man 
filled with metal for years think that he should go up against the master of magnetism. I mean, he's doing it for Who years. Who convinced him that is, that was smart? My thing is, ah, see, there we go. Is in Wolverine, uh, Volume 2, uh, actually 145, actually. But anyway, who's counting? Mm-hmm. X-Men. But anyway, uh, but it's like, he's been battling for years. I think it was a breaking point when Magneto said he had enough of this. So you, shortness from Canada, no disrespect to Canadians, it's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Scruffy. <laughs> You scruffy, short, risky drinking, cigar smoking, baffling, smell bad is where I get heifer. You think every single time it always need to be about you, you need to get to end this. I can end this for you. Here we're gonna happen. You see that thing that you got list? It's called metal. I am I I um I, I do things like you know, magnetism is my thing, because I call it magneto. So I here we're gonna tell you, rip. Your mother, go home now. Heal that. I, it it's, was, it was a moment. I think it was, it was epic in that you didn't think it would. First of all, yeah, like you said, you thought that the metal was his skeleton was sorry the bones. You thought the bones were made of metal, and then that was so that was a big reveal, and that that turned into, I think, eventually them doing the Wolverine origin and revealing where the bones came from and stuff like that, how he was. So, And that was, that was monumental for real because it changed the course of Wolverine's history. For so long, his uh, his mystery was a part of the character. That was almost like mm-hmm. part of his power to be a mystery. And then when they started revealing it, and I, I remember I was one of those people that was like, I don't need to know his origin. Why? Who cares what Wolverine is mysterious as he does? And you know, I still feel like I didn't need to know the origin, but right. um, that's just me. But that's, yeah, I like that one. Um, it still also made me question why Wolverine and Colossus on a team fighting my needle. But, you know. It don't make sense. It don't make sense, don't make sense. at all. <laughs> but um, for me, let me take you back. I'm going to take you back here to a monumental moment for me, fam. Let's go, let's journey back to the glorious days of 1990 when comic book crossovers and big events used to be seldom. They were a rarity. They were moments that you cherished because you knew something big was happening as opposed to, to now this gorge fest of every week it seems an event, an event, then you need another event, an event, an event. And back then they had an event that shaped my young brain called Acts of Vengeance. I don't know if anybody mm. remembers Acts of Vengeance. This was a crossover from Marvel um, that I think was groundbreaking at the time. They had never done anything like this, both in storyline and the way it was. I could be wrong. But um, what they did was that they had the villains swap their enemies. And there was this cabal of supervillains. It was... Um, Red Skull, Magneto, Dr. Doom, King Ping, and basically they orchestrated these um, these hits on superheroes, right? By swapping mm. who they would normally fight. And I remember in the in the in the fallout of that, right? So first of all, not only did you have these superhero epic these epic superhero fights where you had superheroes fighting people that they wouldn't normally face so it was like it was fresh and exciting new storylines and stuff like that right it was also the case where there was a big reveal and one of the main villains the one of the people in the cabal that they were treating like a lackey turned mm-hmm. out to be low key who was orchestrating the whole thing from behind the scenes not only that, they had this whole, they had this little storyline where Magneto, here comes Magneto mm-hmm. again, Magneto retaliated against the Red Skull as the Red Skull was a Nazi. Or is, was, not, the Red Skull is a Nazi. And uh, Magneto was like, uh, hey, yo, chief, let me talk to you for a second. And he basically uh, uh, imprisoned Red Skull. And and that was the whole storyline. And then out of the Acts of Vengeance storyline, 
then there was the emergence of one of my favorite teams to this day, one of the greatest moments in history, the emergence of the New Warriors team. Fam. I you figured, already know. I figured, you I already figured, know how I feel I about figured, that. I figured, fam, you know how I like say. me some New Warriors. Come now. We Come know, on. We know. We know. I don't, I don't know if you know, fam. I don't know if you really, really know. I love New Warriors. I there know. was nothing like it at the time. A night Thrasher, Nova, Namorita, Speedball. Uh, uh, um, I think that that's. I think that's the first, first time I've ever mm -hmm. saw Nova and Night Thrasher was in in the Warriors. Nova. I didn't know nothing about them, fam. And they I were you know, these were characters that were up for a minute. Um. That was and and. Once again, the thing for me with Ass Avengers was the fact that it was it was rare. So, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like, that was big. And then, you know, there was a long period of time before you had the next crossover, which I don't know what the next crossover is. If I found out, I would have to do, like, a, a, a map of Marvel's crossovers, which I should, I should check out. Um, but it meant something. You know what I mean? Right. So... Yeah, that was that was a moment. That was a moment in comic books history for me, man. The Axe Avengers, just the name alone, fam. And you, one of your personas is Vengeance. I just got to feel that, man. I don't know if you uh, were. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. I, no. I was I was five years old when that when when that was published. Actually, it it looking at Wikipedia and it says, Axe Avengers is a comic book crossover storyline that ran through several titles published by Marvel Comics from December 1989 to February 1990. Mm -hmm. You know, February being my birth month, right. and I would have been like five when it finished. So I was like, right. hey, I never knew about it until now. So that is something I'm going to I don't want to do that. You try, well, hold on, hold on, hold on. You trying to tell me, you say you've never heard of Asa Vegas till now? No. I'm sick of you. I'm sick of you. Yeah, and yeah, right now, right now, I feel, uh, I feel, I feel, I feel a type of way. Somebody reminded, reminded me is uh, another moment that happened, but I wanted to say it's a DC moment, mm -hmm. and um, it was the death of Superman. Mm, that was one okay. of them. I was one okay. Of them. All right. I had, I had, I had read, I had read the the actual um the novel itself because back then we used to get a lot. Because again, like you're saying, back in the days, we got some DC comics and in my house was X-Men. Mm -hmm. In my house was a little bit I, I can't remember seeing any of Fantastic Four. Well I I read Fantastic Four when it was later. It was older, sorry. And I read a lot of Spider Man comics and a lot of DC comics was there for sure. And um one of the big big crossovers uh, not big crossover. It, one of the comics was the death of Superman. And the first time I've ever seen a a creature who could actually kill Superman, the the mm. pages was grand, the, the fights were epic. Um, it was it was surreal because at the end of it all, I never thought that again seeing it surprised me like somebody actually killed Superman. Mm. Mm. Which who 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 deemed to be the man of steel. So it's like yeah. there's no way near that. Yeah, this guy, this guy could have died. It was like shoot, and I didn't figure that he was dead anyhow. But that was just me. For, um, probably what six, seven years old, just reading this thing. It's like, but to see it unfold page by page, um, it was amazing. And to read it was it, it captivated me so long for a while. It was like, yo, this is this was this was definitely something. Now here's my thing. I don't want to color this through. The, the the lens of my um um less less than stellar interest in DC no right I don't want to color it through that lens too late I I I, it did, I I don't remember the death of Superman doing anything for me I could be wrong I don't know if like maybe I'm not just not remembering it properly maybe I don't know maybe a younger Sean was you know was giddy and crying or something like that but I don't remember it being doing anything for me. But hey, you know, um, everybody feels differently about their moments. This is why we're here. You know what I mean? As most put up in chat, we want to hear more of your monumental moments in comments. I got one for you, fam. And um, after this, we are going to bring on our our special guest 
of the evening. Um, Ariel, mm -hmm. so Ariel, hope you're ready. I know you're a busy woman, so we want to get you in and get you out, right? Um, this was a moment for me, fam. The birth of Image Comics. Ooh, yes. wait, come on, yes. I'm a comic book head. Yes. I know y'all feeling me on this one. Y'all yes. got to feel yep. me on this yep. one. Yeah, yeah. Before Image, the thought of independent, like independently produced comics, like create their own comics, to me, at that mm -hmm. age, you know what I mean? Being a kid in Barbados, that was unheard of. I didn't, that didn't do, the, you know what I mean? Like, I was like, what? You could, you can create your own. At that time, it was like, you had to get a job at Marvel. You had to get a job at DC. You know what I mean? And of course, we as creators, we, we all made our own stories and stuff like that. But it wasn't until I saw the advertisements for image characters in the back of Marvel characters in, in Marvel comics that my mind was blown. I remember the first time I saw a zealot created by Jim Lee from the Wildcats. It, it, it was like, it was like seeing new colors. I, I couldn't, I couldn't fathom the coolness. Like she had a, she was, she was a woman that had a short haircut, whereas all that you can see normally is on the long flowing lusciousness and stuff like that. But she had this little short cut. Mm -hmm. She had them spikes, them them uh, boomerangs or whatever on the back. She had the two swords. I remember staring at it like, oh my god, this is incredible. I what is this? Right. Then when they started rolling out characters back to back and Spawn. Oh my God, I remember the yes. first time they told so me about Spawn. Spawn. Oh my God. Spawn. Um, I remember one, even within Image, one of the moments wow. that stuck out to me was the formation of Tribe. And Tribe by itself should deserves more respect and should be talked about. It was a comic book created by Nubian people featuring Nubian characters. I'm going to say Nubian, of course, I mean Black. Of course. What? What? Sure. Incredible. And Image provided a home for these people to do these independent books. It was about, you know, ha charting your own destiny, having control over your own characters. Image changed the landscape of comic books oh. to this day, fam. That is a sure. moment in history. No, no, we ain't got to get into the writing of the comic books. Um, and all that stuff, and the fact that they can admit deadlines, we don't gotta dwell on that, you know what I mean? Like, every, every company got it problems and stuff like that, yeah, but, um, yeah, but it happens, it happens, all right. People are happens. normal, okay. You're saying, but listen, you can't tell me um, nothing. You see the lineup of Wildcats, you see when I saw Cyber Force, you see when I saw Savage Dragon, what. What? Savage, 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 savage. Couldn't tell me nothing, fam. I wasn't worried savage. about ladies. Young blood. I don't care what you say about Rob Liefeld. Young blood. <sighs> Come on, now, man. Young blood to this day. Shaft mm. with the with the bow and arrow and the arrow that have like the string, the quiver that have uh, the bow that have the um the string, and it was like supposed to be like kinetic energy. The more it was gravitational, some kind of gravitational thing. So he the 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 further he pulled it back. The further the arrow could go, you can't tell me nothing, bro. I don't care. Young blood to this day. And then when you got older and you realized the business model of these guys, right? The fact that they were able, that they said, we are going to take our destiny into our own hands. We are going to create something. We're not going to be beholden to Marvel and stuff. I recommend anybody that's a, a creator or a business person, or just if you're um, just a fan of good stories, just watch the documentary on Image. Incredible. Incredible. Um, can I can I do a uh, one honorable mention on this? Sure. Because there 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 are a lot, but anyway, one moment stands out for me because it's something I ever thought I would never see in in, in when I was a teenager, but they get to see it. The amalgamation between Marvel and DC. I see what you did that there. Stood out. That I see stood what out. you did there. That stood out. I okay. think, uh, I okay. that stood out to me because. Here is that we get to see Batman fight mm. Captain America, yeah, and um, Thor versus Superman and stuff. So it was, it was like different, you know what I mean? So it, I and we get to see what's happened. Then they made it. They, then they're kind of like amalgamated everything and and mishmashed a lot of characters, which was cool. Some were really had to like question, and some costumes you had to really, 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 really fucking question because Dark Claw. Sounds cool on paper, but drawing it, looking at how it looks, it's like, 
It was terrible. It was terrible. So, I ain't too sure with that. But yeah. But you get what I'm saying, so. Yeah, we're going to, we go, we got yeah. to definitely talk more about uh, Amalgam. And that was, this is what you're a genius, Moles. I keep saying it because now uh -huh. we are going to bring uh -huh. our special guest in, Ariel Johnson, the head of, the creator of the Amalgam Comics and Coffee Host, a coffee yes, shop, sir. a comic book store yes, all in one. Yes, sir. We're going to do that. We're going to see you in a little bit, fam. All right, so I'll Ariel, you I hope bit. you're ready. We are gonna. We are about to bring you on. Um, since Stabba asks, is it different from the Tom McFarlane documentary? Yes, it's different from the Tom McFarlane documentary. You get to hear from the rest of the creators of Image. So I recommend you check that out. So we are about to go live now with our special guest of the afternoon, Miss Ariel Johnson, the head of Amalgam Comics and Coffee House. She's going to correct me. I've probably been saying that wrong for the longest. Hopefully, we're able to drive. Yeah. Hey, Sean. What's up? Are you feeling? Are you? I'm good. How are you? A fantabulous. You know me, man. It's, it's Sunday. I'm here. I get to have you finally on the show. You can't. I can't go wrong. Can't go wrong. So, okay. tell tell me, have I been butchering it all this time? Is it Amalgam Comics and Coffee House or Comics Coffee House and Comics? Well, I actually, I actually replied in the in the chat, Amalgam Comics and Coffee House. Okay, it's like, okay. It's a mouthful. It's a mouthful. No, I, but, I but apologize. But at least you know Amalgam because most people mispronounce that. So right. Yo, for real, I, I, and I, if, I was wondering, is it the case that maybe because I grew up knowing of Amalgam Comics, like I don't see how people could mispronounce it. But I guess if you didn't know about that before. I guess. Yeah, and it's a, uh, it's like a, a people have a tendency to go Al Magam, Al Magam, <laughs> um, or yeah, that's probably the most popular mispronunciation. Mm -hmm. um, so I mean, people have said Amaglam, and you know, I think it's just, I mean, it's a lot of A's. Yeah. You know, it's a lot of I, I, I. So I and and not a word you necessarily see every day. Right. Um. Those but uh, NPR, you, they actually use it a lot. <laughs> but you're making it a household name, though. No. Uh, but let's go back a little bit. I want to do this properly for the for the like I said in the in the uh, in the in the when I was doing the promo for the two people who don't know who you are, tell the people a little bit about Ariel. Um. So uh, my name is excuse me, Ariel Johnson. I oh. am the owner, Ariel Renee Johnson. Uh. I usually put the R in my name because there are some, there are a few Ariel Johnsons out there, which is funny because when I was a kid, that is, was not a common name. Mm -hmm. um, but I guess after the Little Mermaid thing, you know, Disney things changed. Yeah. But um, so, and I am the owner and operator of Amalgam Comics and Coffee House. Uh, we opened our doors in December of 2015. Mm -hmm. uh, we just celebrated our five year anniversary. Congrats! Um, thank you. Which is like, uh, you know, like a big deal for any business, you know, but especially a brick and mortar business because it's really hard to keep those those going these days, especially a bookstore, right? Right. Um, but then the fact that we did it during a pandemic, you know, so I'm just like so super uh, thankful to to the amalgamation out there, everybody who supports, and you know bought books and stuff during this time to kind of keep us afloat. That's been like greatly, greatly, greatly appreciated. Um, but, you know, as you said, we are a comic book store. We're a coffee shop. We're an event space. We're a nightclub. We're a comedy space. <laughs> like we, we are, you know, artist studios. I mean, you know, the Zion Drink and Draw uh, was a monthly event there. Um, we hosted a, a number of like monthly events and we were even getting into some new stuff um mm -hmm. we did like a sipping a sip and paint also mm -hmm. like the, the wine and mm -hmm. paint events um we had like a yoga class that was just jumping off but then covid happened so i'm right. uh, hoping that like once you know the dust settles we'll be able to come back full force but um you know i, I like amalgam is just that it, and it's a it's an amalgam um i it, i love our name because it doesn't pigeonhole us to anything it's yeah. like we can really be anything we want to be, anything we need to be. We can evolve as we see what the needs of our community are. 
um, and so that we can serve our community well. And I, so I just love, you know, I love Amalgam as a concept because it's this ever-growing, this ever-changing thing, yeah. you know? So even, even I'm learning, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We're definitely doing stuff. Like, I would have never guessed that we would be the go-to spot, like, when people want to just host, like, a grassroots comedy show. Like, we get right. so many requests for comedy shows, and it's like, huh, I would have never guess that but cool it's dope you know what i mean right um and then we get you know get to do our like amalgam after dark vibe for the grown-ups um, <laughs> yes so it gets, a, it gets a little grown i heard you saying how you know sometimes it can get a little body on your show right the Amalgam after dark get can get wild too and you gotta look up <laughs> like what do you say <laughs> I, i've been i've been to a few of them and i was like oh, oh. <laughs> But I yeah, love, we I love know, the we fact that it able keeps to host it. some burlesque shows, so you know it get, it can get real live in there. Listen, um, I had when, as you mentioned, we were doing the drink and draw from uh, Malcolm. That was our home for a while, and I had wanted to do a, an adult version of the drink and draw and do like a burlesque thing. But we will we'll talk about that some more. Um, I'll tell you how I know that you made it. You you said this is you know five years, and that uh, especially in the pandemic, I'll tell you how I know that you made it. Right. When you have your own brand, like you call it the Amalgam Nation, you could refer to your, the people that, oh, yeah. and that put me in the mind of like the was it the Beehive for Beyonce, oh. and like the Barbies for Nikki. Like when you have when you can name your followers, that's where you know you made it to me. But um, <laughs> looking let's let's go back real quick. Um, and I I know that um, you've done a ton of interviews and stuff like that, so I know this is you know questions is probably heard a million times. But can you take us back to the inception of Amalgam and where the idea came from and some of the some of the steps that you took to getting it to this now? Oh, and real quick, yes, uh, I see there's there's a question in the group. Please okay. send in your questions for Ariel. I was saying Ariel earlier. Is it is it Barbadian thing? But uh, no, send in right. your questions. <laughs> I understand. Send send us your questions. But go ahead. Yeah, Ariel. Um. Yeah. So. Uh... Um, so this, this goes way back. Uh, I, the idea for Amalgam actually, uh, came to me when I was still in college. Um, I had gotten, I was a, a student at Temple University, big up to you. Uh, I about five, five <laughs> school of business and management. Um, and, but while I was a student there, like my, uh, my shop was uh, Fat Jacks in Center City. So that was my spot yes. every Friday. You know, mm -hmm. I would go to the comic book store, spend money I didn't have uh, <laughs> on these comic books. I had a, I was in a lot of credit card debt when I graduated from school, and it was all comic book related. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the days I used to be able to go to the comic book store. I was like, I had a pile of comics like this. <laughs> the good old days. But anyway. Yeah, the good old days. <laughs> but, um, and so I had, like, this routine. So I would go to Fat Jack's. I would pick up my books. And then across the street uh, at 20th and Sansom, uh, was this really dope coffee shop called Crimson Moon. A uh, black woman owned and run uh, a woman named Coco Darling, who she has, like, the most, like, fucking cool name I've ever heard. It's like, Coco Darling. It's like, you should have, we should be reading stories about you. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, Coco Darling, that's why. Um, but, uh, yeah, so just this, like, really dope, organic spot like um and I just like to be in there I just liked being in that space so I would go and I would get like a little piece of cake I would get a hot chocolate and then I'd sit and just read mm -hmm. I'd read all the you know everything I bought that week and it just felt good to like read my books out in public like not have to go to my nerd dungeon to like do my thing yeah um hide in a corner like, read it publicly and even though like even though I didn't I'm you know I'm very introverted so you know I don't like go out and and try to make friends I'm very much like why are you talking to me but, <laughs> <laughs> but, but, I, but it was still something about that space like I love to be in it and I love to be around other people even though I wasn't necessarily interacting with them directly it just I don't know it was just a vibe mm -hmm. um and unfortunately like most things, you know, gentrification, you know, uh, you know, things are changing in the neighborhood. And um, that uh, that coffee shop, Crimson Moon, ended up closing its doors. And after and after its closing, I just was 
at a like at a loss because for me it wasn't it wasn't just like oh well you know i can just go to starbucks it's like no because right. like like i said it was a vibe she had created like an energy in there that it's like mm -hmm. that can't just be replicated in some kind of box yeah know, commercial coffee spot so i um i don't know it just got me thinking it just got me thinking about like having a space that you feel comfortable in it got me thinking about having a space where you can enjoy like your nerd shit um and and it was that that was just kind of the beginning like oh man wouldn't it be cool if the comic book store was also like that third space that place that you hang out so like right. you don't just buy your books and leave you buy your books you get something to snack on and then you just like chill and so that and so like very early on that was it and that was probably back in 2003 I think mm, um, okay. so then fast forward 10 years mm -hmm. um, and I was in a place in my career like by at this point I graduated I was working you know again accounting major so I was uh, working for a nonprofit um, in there you know as a bookkeeper in their finance department and I was just really unhappy uh, mm. like to the point where it took me 45 minutes to get to work because I lived in the city. I lived in West Philly, but mm -hmm. my job was in Glenside. So that was like a 45 minute drive every day. Well, just, mm -hmm. just one way, 45 minutes, one way. Yeah. Um, and I would cry the entire way there. I wow. would cry my entire 45 minute commute to work because I just, I just wasn't happy. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it wasn't that mm -hmm. the work was horrible. It was just, right. I just didn't feel fulfilled in it. Um, and, and was just really struggling, like, like, what are you really doing? Mm. Um, so then that coupled with, um, the loss of my mom, um, oh. passed when she was 57. Uh, so. and my father, my father who passed, well, thank you. Yeah. And, and when my, and my father who passed when I was 16, mm. you know, he, he, he passed before his sixties too. Right. Mm. So, so now I'm in this place where I'm thinking about just my own mortality, right? Yeah. Neither, neither of my parents made it to 60. So mm -hmm. for all I know, you know, I might not either, right? And so, mm -hmm. but so you know, what am I doing in that time? Do I want to spend my time, you know, with a 45-minute commute where I, I'm crying the entire time? Or am I going to, mm -hmm. like, do something? Like, what are you doing? Um and then that is like, it's like a whole host of things. And then just that coupled with just the support of my sister and my brother-in-law. Um, like we were out to brunch one day and I was going on, going on some rant, some Marvel rant about one of the movies about why I was mad. Uh, <laughs> I, you know, the X-Men stuff uh, has not always you know, it's kind of hit or miss. There have been right. some winners in there, but there's you can say that a lot of X-Men stuff has been shaky. So I'm sure I was like, you know, just ranting about some, some X-Men thing. And my brother-in-law said to me, he said, you know, the only time you get excited about what you're talking about is if you're talking about comics or dance. Because I, you know, I, I dance too. What? And that's not, I mean, I did, yeah. And it, but it's like for me, especially now that the comics piece of my life is so public, Mm -hmm. I'm very private with the dance piece. Like okay. it's what I, it's what I do to exercise. It's what I do to just kind of connect to okay. myself, connect to the universe. Um, mm -hmm. You know, uh, you know, sometimes connect to God. Like, like, like all of that. Like, I, I feel like dance is is has become transcended to me because now it's my personal thing. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but anyway, but yeah. So he's just saying, you know, the and 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 when he said that. Um, when he said that, I kind of took took it the wrong way. I thought he was saying like, you know, you need to like grow up. You you know, you still oh, okay. you know yeah. read comics talking about I want to be a dancer, and it's like ah. <laughs> and, and 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 I took it that way because that's I I took it that way because that's where I was. I think mentally as I was trying to like reconcile my interest with being an adult and yeah, yeah. what should adults be doing? Like, should I be reading the Wall Street Journal now? I don't know. I think uh, comic book fans, we have to, we almost walk around ready to defend it. You know yeah, like, what? Oh, look, look. Uh, oh, oh you said good morning. <laughs> oh, you, oh, you are oh. coming at me? Oh, my baby. <laughs> <laughs> but, my, but my sister and I, my sister was like, you know, no, you know, she saw where I was going, my train of thought, and she was like, no, that's not what he's saying. He's saying, you know, if that's 
if those are the things that excite you, then you need to think about that. Mm -hmm. You know, and so again, not telling me what to do, but just saying like, you know, if that's really where, where you feel you, you find your light, then you need to think about, just think about that. Like in your mm -hmm. life, like, what do you want to do with that? Um, and yeah, and so so then, you know, as I'm thinking about that, it's like, well, what do I, what do I want to do? And so yeah. then it goes back to a malum. Like, again, this idea that I had in college that I kind of, you know, threw around a little bit, but it wasn't anything that I, I really thought was going to happen. It was just right. like my own little personal, I call it my own little personal pipe dream. It's like, yeah. that's not really going to happen. But if, if anything could happen, wouldn't that be cool? Right. But then I was just in this place. It's like, well, why not that? You know, you, you, you've done every you've done what you thought you were supposed to do mm -hmm. with the route that made sense coming out of school, given what your major was, and you're really not happy. So mm -hmm. why not try that other thing? Yeah. And I mean, and that, and that was really, really it. I mean, I still feel like amalgam as it exists today is just me getting up every day and trying, you know, mm. like figuring it out as you go. Like I certainly, you know, don't have all the answers and there's a whole list of things that if I could go back and do them again, I would have done it different. Oh, yeah. But, you know, but mistakes are part of it, right? And, and right. thankfully, you know, we, we, you know, I've yet to make a mistake that we haven't been able to kind of, you know, come back from like, and it, and it might hurt you. Like there, there are things that it's like, it's like, oh, that didn't, that put us in not a great place, but we still were able to eke through. Yeah. Um, and you just kind of, um, you just kind of learn. Um, I'm sorry, I'm adjusting my phone a yeah, little yeah. bit. Uh, and I gotta apologize too. Like sometimes if you see me look off, it's just because I got my notes and stuff here and the, and the music and stuff, so. Oh, no, no, I understand. I know you, you're producing. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, and, um, <clears throat> yeah, so it's just like, yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm, you know, I get up every day and I, and I literally put, you know, put my all into this. Um, yeah, and, and by no means have it all figured out, you know, figuring it out, you know, as I go. And, and but, but learning, right? So yeah. Like, so there were things that in the beginning, was this mad scramble to figure out and now it's like oh we know how that works it's like oh we right. want to do that kind of event cool we've done yeah. it this is the prize you know what i mean and so yeah. even, even in the process of doing the job it's been really really cool because i also have seen how much i've grown how much my team has grown You're how right. much the, the business has grown like you know we we're you know we're we're figuring it out and which is really cool and and i feel like um this is, you know, like, this could be a lesson for everybody. I love what you said as far as, like, being unhappy in one thing. And this is something that we talk about on the show a lot. And doing what you love. And even in the bad moments, you're like, I would rather be going through it with my own thing than someplace else. So I love right. that. Um, and, and, um, and, and what you said right there is important, going through it with your own thing. Because right. I think that's the other thing. I think a lot of people have this idea of like, oh, I'm going to start my business and then life will be great. And it's like, uh, no. Right. And, 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 and when it's your thing, you can't leave, right? Yeah. So, yeah. you know, when you, you have a job and you clock in and clock out and there's a dumpster fire, you look at it and you still clock out and say, that's crazy. <laughs> I'll see y'all tomorrow. You know what I mean? Tell me but what happened. <laughs> but you can't do that when it's yours. It's like, you stay with the dumpster fire, right? So it, So it's, it's not easier yeah. and, and in a lot of ways it's harder, but I think it's also more fulfilling. If that yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Um, and in the, you, in the moment you're not pulling your hair out, it's more. Right. <laughs> you can look back. I mean, because now looking back, like you now have become one of those people, like you're, you're everywhere. You're on billboards, you're on CNN, all kind of stuff. Looking back, right. Was there a little piece of you? Because you like to get real on the show, Ariel. Was there a little piece of you that's like, this is the shit, yo. I'm going to kill them. They ain't ready. Or was this all a, a pleasant surprise coming into this? Oh, uh, definitely a pleasant surprise. Um, I, you know, I, I, I always of course it's like you set out you want your business to do well right. um and so i you know and so i wanted amalgam to do well but it just never dawned on me that doing well would look like this you know yeah. what i mean that yeah. that i am getting the opportunity to 
meet folks I would have never met, you know, and, mm -hmm. and, and ha be, have interviews and be on this podcast and that podcast and this show and that, you know, I mean, that like, that is, that is like dope. And I, and I do love it and I appreciate it. Um, but I still feel like I'm very, very grounded because <laughs> it's like, yeah, I'll go and do one of those shows. And then I got to go clean the bathrooms. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's, not, it's like, I'm not sitting in my, like, in my Lex Luthor office with my feet up. Like, you know what I mean? It's like, no, it's like, now I got to go. All right, the, the bank closed at five. I got to go. And then I got to swing by the post office. Then I got to go pick up milk. Then I go. Right. Then we got to, you know, mop the floor. And then we got to move these boxes. Like, I'm like that. All of that is also still happening. So it's still very much like hands on, you know, I'm, you know, I still pretty much work, you know, every day and mm -hmm. you know, doing something, you know, I'm never, I'm never quite off. So, right. it's, so it's still, it's still a grind, right? Yeah. Um, but a grind, you know, for a grind for something I really believe in, mm -hmm. you know, a grind that I'm like a hundred percent, um, passionate about and, and love and, yeah. and all that. Um, yeah, so it's so it's just weird. It's just weird. I still feel like there are some things where I mean, you talk about like that the, when you said the billboard. I'm assuming you mean that temple thing. That's still weird to me. For, and I didn't, and here's the thing: I didn't even know that was up until you were the first person that was like, "Okay, you sent it to me," and I was like, "What?" I was like, "Oh, oh wait stop. A I remember I was I was I was in, I was waiting on the Broad Street line, right and. You know, I was waiting. I think I was waiting for like the local or something. I was like, "Oh, the express coming. Let me go over." So I, it was. I was like, "Oh, it, it was amazing!" Like to 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 have met you to to come from hearing about your story on Kickstarter, how you started the Kickstarter to, to to get the funds for 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 opening the store, and then like actually meeting you, and then now seeing you on a billboard. It was incredible. And then to come into the store, and like you said. You're still baking cookies. You're making coffee. You know, you're still doing all the, the small things to keep a business running. And uh, speaking of business, real quick, I want to get to some of the questions that we have in the group so that uh, people can pick your brain a little bit. Okay. This is a question from AK Lovelace. Shout out to AK. He's a longtime um, fan of the show. He asks you, how do you feel about Diamond having a monopoly on distribution what are your thoughts on dc making the move to break that up as a retailer um well i mean so i you know i my my feelings about diamond are complex um you know I, they they do what they do well right so i so i can't even be mad at that like there there is an efficiency uh to diamond that that you have to appreciate, but you are absolutely right. Uh, it is a monopoly. Um, and so that is really, I think, problematic for retailers, especially because I feel like the collective of retailers do not have any power in that relationship because they are the end all be all, you know, to these to you know, single issue comics. Um, and even with DC, I mean, even with DC breaking from them, I mean, for again, for single issue comics, DC is now exclusively with Lunar. So it's so it's like it's still the same kind of thing. Like I can only get this item from these particular people. Um, it's just that you know, now for you know everything else, I go to Dime, and then for DC, I go to Lunar. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, so so I I. I definitely think there should be competition, but there should be competition, meaning I can get my books from Diamond or I can get my books from Lunar. I, and, I, and it's my choice depending on who I want to deal with. Right. You know, like, like if I have an issue with a vendor, I have no other options. I can't say, well, you know what? I'm just, maybe we'll break from this relationship and I'll move to and, and try out someone else. It's like, that's not really an option. Mm. It's still not an option, even though, you know, Lunar's on the table. Um, so I, you know, I, but I do, I mean, I, I, I think my only issue with DC breaking and, and moving on to, to other options is the, that it was done in the middle of a pandemic and it was done when, when Diamond was shut down, mm -hmm. like Diamond was not, 
shipping books, which for us was really beneficial because we weren't open. So it was like, yeah. I'm not in a place where I can take books because right now me and my staff are quarantining. Like we're not, you know, because especially in the, in the beginning, it was like, stay home, do this. And so it's like, I'm not going to have, you know, my folks who, you know, a, a, a majority of them depend on public transportation. So being on public transportation in a pandemic, yeah. you know, to trying to get books to people. And then in addition to that, we're not even getting new books. Yeah. So, so um, kind of DC jumping the line and, and continuing to put books out at a time where it just really wasn't good for us to even have that weekly diamond bill or I mean well in that case you know this was a separate bill but it wasn't we weren't in a good place where we could be you know paying each week for these new shipments because it's like we're not even operating like hey we can't we're not a you know we're not a um what they call them uh what's the word for the businesses that they asked to shut down oh my god I'm drunk I wish I could help and like like uh dang. essential kind of essential thank you oh, oh. <laughs> it's like on the top of my tongue so we're you know, so we so we are not an essential business right um and then even just from a place of safety i'm not going to expose my employees to 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 possibly getting sick right. for a dollar you know what i mean like it just yeah, yeah. Stuff. it's like something bigger is going on everybody go home and you know we'll we'll figure it out, right? Yeah. So so I think so for me, DC doing that kind of made it harder for us because when we did come back, now we're trying to scramble to get books that we didn't get because we were shut down. It's like yeah. I can't place orders for a book because I can't pay for them and I can't. Ex nobody's there to accept them and and you know so all that. Um, mm -hmm. So it just made stuff a little bit messier on the dc side like everything else like all the other books were kind of you know with a steady flow um but the dc stuff has been a little messy and then especially for us because we went with ucs because they're closer so as far as shipping times they would have been they're the best option um and then and then the the relationship with ucs got severed so then we've had to switch twice Mm -hmm. Move from Diamond to UCS and then UCS mm -hmm. to Lunar. Yeah. And so that so that has also been a hiccup. And so, you know, there are books that got missed and we're trying to see if we can get them in. And so it's just been like a little bit of a headache. And in my mind, I'm like, if they would have just stayed with Diamond during this period, right. that would have been helpful, especially because a lot of stores, I think, are like us and had to shut down. And then if you want to break from them after the fact, cool, but like, don't do that while everybody's in flux. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So it's just, mm -hmm. it was just kind of messy. Um, so I know you're a busy woman. You say you never have a day off. We are coming to the to the close, but so I want to do like a rapid fire type of thing, oh, yeah, right? Yeah. There's I, a few, you know. Um, so speaking about the pandemic and, you know, everything that's been going on now, but having to shut and stuff like that. Once this is passed, um, this is building off a question from Punks of Rage. Are there any plans to expand our franchise? Uh, not right now. Right now, I'm really just focused on wanting to be utilizing our current building fully. Like, again, right before everything shut down, we just opened our classroom space. So I really want to, like, kind of get into the groove with that and have that kind of generating um a, a revenue stream for the store and then that will you know hopefully give us some breathing room so i can think about like what the future looks like as far as okay. like expansion or you know franchising or whatever okay and the topic was monumental moments in comic books what is one of your monumental moments in comics could be oh, a storyline yeah, a character um something that happened from a business standpoint What's something? Uh, well, well, I guess from a business standpoint, I guess a personal standpoint, um, the the amalgam Invincible Iron Man variant that happened. I feel like that's talk to the people, Ariel. Tell them they're ready. I thought that. I think you was trying to you was trying to steer me in that direction. I don't um, want to be that. Listen, it was on my mind. It was on, I want to see if you got there. That's all. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. So, yeah, so that happened back in November 2016. So that was still within our first year operations. We were, you know, just shy of being one years old. Um, and 
that book dropped the day after the 2016 election. You know what I mean? So mm. there was this feeling of dread, mm. you know, you know, as we were, you know, hailing in Satan, apparently. <laughs> um, and and, it, and and I feel like it was in the air. Like you could just, it felt heavy. Um, but the, so that was, you know, Tuesday was the election. Wednesday, the book drops. And we had folks like turn up like in droves. Like once again, I was completely blown away by the support and that that cover got that people like actually wanted it. Like yeah. people still call us now. I mean, that book's been sold out for a while now. People still call the shop, email us. Hey, do you still have that cover? And it's like, no, that's gone. But it, but it was like, this just this dope moment, especially yeah. me as a Marvel fan. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm a Marvel girl. That's um, what's up. And to, to, to actually be on the cover on, of a Marvel magazine. And then it wasn't just me. It was the shop, too. Like, on that yeah. cover, we are in Amalgam. So it's just like, it's, it was just like this really, really dope moment that I still, to this day, I don't think it's fully sunk in that that happened. No, you know did, what I mean? was it was it was this an incentive that they were doing for, for comic book shops and you reached out to them or did they reach out to you? They actually reached out to us and it was just with the idea of like, hey, you know, Riri Williams, we're, inter you know, introducing her, um, which was like a big deal. And then I think, you know, again, because we are a black woman owned shop, it's like, oh, would you like to do a variant? And they, and you know, publishers will offer store variants to folks. Um, and my initial answer was no. I, I, was like, well, I was like, how many do we have to order? And uh -huh. I don't know, what's the, what's the cost? And when they said that, I was like, uh, no. <laughs> I was like, that's gonna be no. Um, and it was actually Randy Green Shout out to Randy. Randy Green, uh, Randy Steele, uh, my comic book Jedi, who was like, well, he was like, well, he called me boss. He was like, boss, and he was like, I think we should do this cover. He was like, let me talk to him. Let me see if I can, like, you know, talk him down and peace count so we won't be committed to having to order so many. So, mm -hmm. you know, so it's like, all right. And he worked that out, and they were like, okay, cool. We can, we can work with that. And I was like, dope. And then Randy was like, do you have any ideas for what you want on the cover? And I was like, I do not. And he was like, well, I have an idea. I think it should just be you and Riri in the shop, period. Randy's and I the was man. Like, so that was all Randy's idea. And I was like, OK, Randy, that's fine. You know, because in my mind, I'm like, oh, my God, we're about to order all these books. And now yeah. we have to sell these books or I'm going to be in tears later. <laughs> and then. The, then the book comes out and it's like everybody's like losing their mind for it. Like I'm saying, and people, like I said, people are still, do you have it? People have tagged us on Instagram where they actually went and got it like CGC graded. So it's like, so it's like, you know, it's this cover with me on the cover and it's like 9.8. It's like, what? That's insane. Wait, like, so that's wait. Crazy. Do you have, um, please tell me you got like your own frame copy of it hanging up somewhere. You know what? So I do, but again, not because of my own doing. I'm like a really bad comic book store owner. <laughs> like, I never have anything because I'm always like, well, a customer wanted it. <laughs> so it's like, it's all about the customers. Like, but I actually had a friend um, who bought one and mm -hmm. then got it graded for me and gifted it to me. So I do oh have my God. one, but it was a gift. Now, and, 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 and that might, I, that makes me feel trifling. It's like, I, I couldn't even take care of that. Somebody else had to give me my own book. <laughs> oh, but that's the thing. I feel like you, that's the, that's the relationship you have with the customers where you're like, yo, a customer wants this, which by the way, Summer is blowing you up in the chats and hey, she Summer just sent Willow. me a text to tell you she said hi. She's she's comical. Um, and uh, our last question then um, comes from our co-host Moz. Moz asks, "What is a Philly John?" Oh well, I mean, so Willow, uh, Summer Willow has uh, answered it. A Philly John is primarily a reference to a woman, sometimes a man, who resides in and is from Philadelphia. Loosely, a John can be anything. A mm -hmm. John is a noun, person, place, or thing. Um, that is directly from a book uh, called Buck by M.K. Asante, like where he defines John. And I was like, that's like, that was perfect. But yeah, so a Philly John, like a Philly, like it could be anything, but like it's like, oh, she's a Philly John. Da, da, da. It's like, you know, it's just somebody in in Philly. And I guess I'm a Philly John now. I like I'm originally from Baltimore, but I've been here. 
I've been here. We we take we claiming you, Ariel. We claiming you. Yes, yeah, I mean I've been here as an adult since two thousand seven, and yeah. then I was here from oh one to oh five as a student. So at this point, I think I, I I'm I'm Philly for life at this point. That's what's up, yo, and a beautiful way to end. Thank you so much, Ariel, for finally blessing us with your presence because I know you're crazy busy, so we really appreciate it. And I don't know what you got going on, but there's some more questions that are in the chat. So if you're around and you're able to answer, I guess that'd be cool because we, uh, my boy, the real Reaper's Touch, he asked, what is a good way to promote a comic book after a successful Kickstarter without being able to hit a comic book convention? So hopefully, if you're able to, that's great. If not, um, Guys, maybe you can hit up Ariel later on or something. Um, <laughs> I don't want to take over her time. But, yeah, um, thank you for being here, Ariel. Appreciate thank you. Thank you so much, Sean. Can't and wait can to I come just back. say real quick to your folks, um, if you're interested, if you're looking for books, um, we do uh, uh, in-store subscriptions. We do mail order subscriptions. If you're, nice. if you're away from... I mean, if, you, if you're not a Philly John and you're out of... Out of Philly, <laughs> um, also... Uh, check us out at amalgamphilly.com. Uh, we are working really hard to get our entire inventory online. So chances are, if you if you if you want it and we have it, it's online. Um, and also be on the lookout. As I said, we just celebrated our five year anniversary, and we have some special merch um, to commemorate the event coming mm -hmm. out soon. Um, design was just finalized, and so we're we're getting ready to go into pre sale. So if you want. Ooh. Amalgam hoodie, amalgam mug, oh. stickers or whatever. And now's the time. Like, check us out. We're That's what's follow up. Follow us on our Instagram. Follow us on our Twitter at Amalgam Philly. Um, and we'll be having those announcements soon, so you can get some sweet amalgam swag. And and this is just a personal request from me. I don't know if you're planning on doing more of them, but you did you did a live um, a few weeks ago or something like that. And yeah, for the for our for the anniversary. Yeah, right. I want that as a regular thing. Um, I love how you interacted with the people, and it, you had me done because you were like, "I don't know how to do this." And then, and I'm like, what? I would have sworn that this would that would be nothing for you, but it was great. I'm not the tech person. That's my self. <laughs> but I, I want to see some in more. Front of a blank screen, talking about how it works, like somebody's <laughs> grandma. <laughs> I want to see some more amalgam lives and and some uh, a talk show or something. So we're gonna put that into the atmosphere. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm hearing you. I'm catching it. <laughs> All right, be safe. Catch you All later. All right, see you, Sean. Peace. Thank you. Thank you. Listen, I don't know about y'all, man, but th that woman's spirit, can y'all feel it coming through? Can, did y'all feel it coming through the screen? She's incredible. If you're not following her, please go follow her. Um, I wish we had more time with her, but uh, today, especially, uh, we're we trying to make sure that we hit all of our time marks because right after this show, we are going to be going live with Moe's for his after show where he invites you on and we get to talk. You get to ask all your questions. He gets to find out more about you. So please tune in for that. Get your, uh, um, all your questions and stuff together. And Moe's is going to be taking care of you. So actually we are going to bring Moe's back on in here and we are actually, um, Oh, my fault. No, we are going to go with Seth Dalsey, um, who has a segment called In Other News. So, Seth, I hope you're ready. We are bringing you on. The In Other News segment is... Oh, there we go. Seth. All right. See, uh, there we go. Where is... It keeps disappearing on me. Seth, you ready? Okay, there we go. All right, sorry, technical difficulties. Um, uh, Summer says she makes me want to make more vibranium. That was a drink, right? Yeah, I think I, think I remember that. Seth Dolce. Son, I mean. Yes, sir. You son of a bitch. I mean, I mean. I was just coming off a real positive vibe. I don't feel it's necessary for all That's that. That's no problem. You can be positive. I still be a son of a bitch. I mean, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> anyway. Let's do this. Anyway. In other news. Yeah. After gathering some dust for some time now, 
mm-hmm. it appears that Netflix Simon has finally begun production. As it means to me, as me, reports are saying that he was juggling a few jobs part time, right? He had a brief stint as a substitute Simon on Apollo, and then he was sitting selling sleeping pills in the desert. I don't, I don't, I don't think that's the way she should be. Ain't me. I don't think we should be advertising that that selling pills. Sleeping pills in the desert. That's necessary. That's not good. Okay. Yes. In the King of Black storyline, Black mm-hmm. Cat just got a physical upgrade. Physical upgrade. You know how Black Cat looks. Physical upgrade. I really right. wanted it to be her breasts, but it seems to be as guardian in nature. As guardian. I, I get it. Is that right. a real story, or did, did you make that up, or is that yeah. real? No, it's a real story. It's a real story. She got a power up in the King of Black, and, and, okay. and she's no has a, she's a, as guardian goddess. I see what you did there, the Asgardian. Okay. Mm-hmm. Right. In other news, mm-hmm. more from the pages of King and Black, more story. We all mm-hmm. know the power of music, right? And we know in Sean's case, the sound of music, his favorite, song, his favorite movie of all time. That's not, that's not that's a his favorite. finger when he go to sleep. When he sleeps, he goes to sleep to listen to it. Anyway. Um, but in a house of Deadpool, music can be off the charts. See what right, music was <laughs> inf- influential in making the symbiote um, take the symbiote off of Jeff the Lion Shark. Now, there's a person named Jeff the Lion Shark, but blasting the music from a very large speaker, playing tears by the by the Wu Tang Clan. Mm-hmm. Right, okay. this bring a whole new truth to the saying when you say the Wu Tang Clan is nothing to f with. See what I did there? Yes, because they have a song called. Wu Tang Clan and Dr. Fight. Yes, we got it. We got it. Yeah. In other news, there uh-huh. that was the news again. I know you, oh, I know you didn't. I know you didn't see this coming. Rumors Don't are swirling regarding Don't. Charlie. Wait, oh man, come on, man, Sean. Let me just read the news. Oh wait, yeah. sorry. Rumors sorry. are swirling regarding Charlie Cox's potential return to the to the MCW, MCU as Daredevil. Marvel uh-huh. head honcho. Um, Kevin Fergie remains in the dark about the possibility, leaving many to ask if he can see the light on Lake Daredevil. I can't see no light. In further news, government all over the world are asking Daredevil to help them fight COVID 19. I just used to fighting things he can't see, so he should be the right man for the job. Stop. You know I mean? Stop. I'm not endorsing this. I'm not. I'm done. I'm done with in the Daredevil other- job. Uh-huh. Marvel conducted voting to see who will be the new X on the new X Men team. All right. Okay. I personally will, will want Beak on the team with his uncanny ability to flake a bird. Bones light and hollow. He has arms with feathers and I was loading him to glide and flake for short distances with great effort. Well, you said Beak. Just, well, Beak. You serious? You you want Beak on the X Men? Um, I'm missing you there. I didn't get you just now. I was saying, you said you want Beak on the X Men? Yeah, I want Beak on the X Men. What? No, Sean. No, Sean. He's useless. He's okay. useless. Okay. <laughs> but you know what? Sean has a superpower. He's got he's a mutant ability. He's I'm able like to look at and make it and, and, and tell you what the ingredients in it that made it. Any vegan product could tell you what the ingredients are. I don't think that's necessary. I mean, you seem like you're coming at vegans. It, right. It's, I could, is it coming at you, you son of a bitch? I'm out. Why are you mean coming at? Every time, every time I feel positive about life, I feel good about where we're going with the show, Seth has to come on and say something ignorant. I think about cutting that segment. I think about cutting that segment. I don't, I don't think it's necessary for him to. We're going to keep it moving, people. We're going to keep it moving. I apologize. That's not the, that's not the kind of attitude I want Zion to have. Um, 
we are going to move on to our next segment, uh, Lit Pick with Antonio Pomeres. Uh, Antonio, if you are in the house, give me a thumbs up. Let me know that you're here. I'm going to send a request just in case. Lit Pick is the hungry, the hungry bleak. Right? Lit Pick is our segment where Antonio gives you recommendations of comics for the week. Um, so far, he's been giving us some gems, some stuff that I wasn't even aware of. He was giving us books that I had never even heard of. So hopefully he's able to join us. I know that around this time, oh well, yeah, since they're there, around this time, he might be getting ready for work. The man has to get up early, and he's taking his time to be here with us. So Antonio, if you're there, give us a little, give us a little shout. If not, we are. <laughs> if not, we are going to go into a little trivia with our man Moz. So Moz, you ready to jump in? If Antonio, then we could bring Antonio in afterwards. All right, all right. I don't see him yet. I don't see him yet. We give him, give him a little more time to the request runs out. All right. So Antonio, when you get in, give us a shout. All right. In the meantime, we are going to go back live with our co-host, Julian Mosley, the other Mos, my man for legend. Hey, we're going on, fam. Yeah. Thanks for coming back on. We're going we're gonna to kick good. it a little bit till uh, Antonio is able to join us. Um, I don't care whatever happens, right? Like, Seth does the most incredible job of actually bringing you the news, bring us the news every single time. Is crazy, huh? I am. I'm sick of him. He doing the most. He doing too much. It ain't necessary. First, you know, like the the the, the daredevil <laughs> jokes. Every week, he coming at me for no reason. For no reason, just started. Anyway, but I'm gonna dwell on that. I'm gonna and let there, that go. There is Antonio. So yeah, Antonio he there. He, yeah, he's here. We are gonna see you in the sack five. Yep. Antonio, get ready. Bring you in. Uh, bam. All right, Antonio. Hopefully that you could connect. We had a little, we had some technical issues just before we went on this um this evening. So I see it connected. Oh my man, Antonio. Yes, yes, Sean. Yes. Yes. Sir. yes. Um we have there's a lot of snow outside right now. So the the, the cold front is coming in. Yeah. And we're going wait, wait, what's that? This that's the wrong show? Shit. Okay, sorry about that. Oh, I didn't. Yes, this. Um, I'm trying to. There's a lot going on right now. I've I've had to take up a second job as a weather uh, reporter, but I just sit on my couch and just tell people what the weather is because it's too cold to go outside. <laughs> that, sounds that's like what, that sounds like what weathermen do every day normally. Yeah. Not yes. saying that um, weather, weathermen, but after a while, like I know it's snowing. When's it going to end? That's that's why I want. Um, it will end when I don't have that report just yet. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get that. Can you get me that? No, you, no, because there's nobody here. Okay, good. So, <laughs> right. That's yeah, that's pretty much how it is. I, I apologize for being late. A lot going on today, but good to see. I missed Seth. I don't know what happened and I'm, I'm sure that you don't need don't, to know. Yeah. You don't need to know. All right. That's, and to fine. sum I'm, it up, still, to sum it up, Daredevil jokes and attacking vegans. I I don't why. <sighs> but has he had the Beyond Burger? Once, and he fell in love with it, but he won't admit it publicly. Next week, we are going. To, I'm going to try to get him to admit that he loves the Beyond Burger. Or right, you know what? You only chat, um, Seth. Tell the truth. Shame the devil. Let us know how much you love the Beyond Burger. Do it. Put it in the chat. It's, Come on, though. Oh, my God. And let me tell you that. And have, have you had Just Egg? Uh, yep. Yeah, I had some two weeks ago. I had some this morning. Uh, I'm a little jealous. I, I'm a little jealous. I bought two bottles because I knew I was going to be running through it. I, mm. I can't get in. You know what? Oh, my God. Yes. Yes. I bought, normally, right, I try to make the bottle last a week. And this one, I went through it in, like, three three meals, right? Like, like you know, pretty much back-to-back, -back, as you did. 
And I had a friend that was like, oh, she was like, oh, you used that up already? I said, are you clocking me? Get out, <laughs> get out my business. That's what you need to do. Don't worry I, about what's going on over here with me and Just Eggs. Why? I feel... Don't worry about that. <laughs> I you feel like... I Yeah, I mean, it's, it's so... I didn't realize how good it was going to be. Like, I was just trying it out because a friend of mine was like, these are things you should try. I was like, all right, cool. So I tried them because she knows that I, I have issues with textures. So mm -hmm. I said, all right. right. The texture dip was, at, like, like while I was cooking it, it kind of bothered me because I was like, wait, it's not warming up like Voltron, like how I normally have. I don't get right. it. Right. But I, I said, you know what? Let me trust this process. Kept doing it, you know, a little salt, a little pepper. Then I had my uh, Beyond Sausage, the patties. Talk to them. All right, cool. Come on. I'm getting it. And it was my first time having the Beyond Sausage patties and also the, the, uh, the, the Just Egg. Look, I don't know. What I feel like we need commercials about this stuff. People need to start talking about Just Egg. This, it's beyond, it's, yeah. We're going yeah. to take, take it a step further, uh, Antonio, because what I think you're saying, what I hear you saying is you want to do a Zion spinoff show where we compare vegan products and talk about it and cook. I'm sold. You got me. Let's do it. We going. That's coming soon, people. You saw it here. The birth, the inception of the Zion Vegan Show. Let's make it happen, Antonio. You getting the report too? Are you gonna? Um, this just in. Mm. Beyond Egg just texted me and said, "Your, I think it's the quote. Possibly, yes." Yes, yes. I, I feel like it's just, I didn't know it was going to be that good. It really mm -hmm. is that damn good. Yeah, I'm, and I'm a staunch, and I'm like a meat eater. I am, but I wanted to try, you know, going vegetarian, you know, for like the, you know, January. And I'm like, so I'm going to keep going with just egg. I'm going to start eating uh, Beyond Burgers instead of actually eating like burgers. They're just good. We got a lot of hate in the chat right now from Moles. Moles says he's tired of hearing about us trying to celebrate just eggs. <laughs> He says, let's get to the lip pick. Let's get to it. <laughs> let's do that. All right. So let's Haters. get to it. So I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to do something different this week. I'm going to give you some, uh, some choices, but I'm going to celebrate two uh, 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 comic book publishers uh, on this show. So we got some great news this week about unique uh, comics. Um, with uh, Roy Okupe, he has a 10-book deal with Dark Horse. This is phenomenal, great, outstanding. Look, and Robert Jeffrey said it the best. Royal Coupe didn't need Dark Horse. Dark Horse needed Royal Coupe. Speak on it. And it's just amazing. It's great to see, too. It, he's created this whole universe of African uh, superheroes and characters and a wealth of just uh, depth and story and everything like that. So some of the books that are coming out from this uh, just amazing company are and I have them all, but I, but I don't have big hands, so I have to just, you know, hold up a few. And, uh, you know, big hands, you know, definitely. <laughs> small hands, is, you know, that you wear small gloves. I, right. When I go to Old Navy, my gloves are small and medium. I, that's all I can do. And I, and, sorry, you know, sorry to hear that. Um, no, don't worry about it. And uh, so we got EXO and Malaika. These are, uh, like, EXO was, like, their flagship title. And Malaika, mm -hmm. I think, was the next title to come from them. Amazing stuff. Uh, near Future Africa uh, story in EXO. Uh, Malaika is the story of an African uh, queen warrior. Uh, just amazing stuff. They also have out, uh, I think this is their most recent one, I want to mm -hmm. say, in Yanu. I haven't gotten to this one yet because, like I said, my list is ridiculously high for reading. But yeah. just look at how pretty, I mean, it's a beautiful, and I know it's going to be a great story because Unique, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, Unique Studios does quality work. Yeah. They do just the best stuff is just amazing, honestly. Yeah. Uh, and I'm just, that's amazing to just to be grinding that hard and pushing and pushing and doing that work. And then you got to knock at the door or a phone call. I don't know if they knock at the door. I feel like that's kind of rude to just come at somebody's door. But, you know, however Dark Horse want to do it, and for them to come in with this and that whole deal, amazing. Congratulations to uh, to Unique Studios and to Royal Coupe. If you are an indie creator and you are doing it, I mean, Sean, you are 
one of the first ones that I met out there doing it, grinding, when I started, like, getting into the indie scene. You guys are amazing. You're creative. You are incredible. Thank you, brother. For what you do. Keep pushing. Keep going. Um, because, it, you know, you're going to get that call, that knock, that text, that email, whatever it is, because they're starting to see, oh, look at all these, these people who are doing this on the indie scene. Look at all these people of color doing it. Why haven't we jumped on this before? And what I love you know. about Unique Studios, and, and this, I, I'm so glad that you're using this segment to highlight his books, because normally, you know, I know you do like a few books for a different thing. We could do a whole right. look pick about his, his books with, and really go in depth with them. But I love the fact that he's using African creators as well. Like, he's not just yeah. talking to talk, he's walking the walk. Like, like I, and I could be wrong. But as far as I know, like all the creators he has on his books are Nubian people or African people. Um, oh, they are. Oh, I, I, I did not know I that. Could be wrong. I, I thought so. I saw. I read the article. I saw the list of names, and I have to do my due diligence and really research it. But as far as I know, like all his creators have been Nubian, and his his character, his um, stories feature Nubian leads, black leads, um, and I'm a, I I salute him. He's amazing. Um, yes, y'all should definitely support his uh, his products. And, you know, it. I think this is a major moment. We're talking about monumental moments in comics. Truthfully, th I think this will go down in a few years as a monumental moment in comics when the Dark Horse came and saw, like you said, the potential in what this man has and was like, we need that. And so, exactly. yeah. Thank you, man. Um, I wish but, we could keep everyone for a little bit more. You, do you, do you, did you have more? Yes, I have one more company that I want to highlight. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> this is uh, Un Unstoppable Comics. Great stuff. Uh, one of the first creators that I met, um, also going through uh, Comic-Con and everything. He's a really cool guy. That's probably um, just Ed calling right now to let me know when the fight is coming up because we're going to do this thing. Yeah. So we have Unstoppable Comics. Um, one of the coolest comic book companies out there, they have a varied uh, uh, list of comics from Storm Chasers, uh, Dragon Storm. They have New York versus the World, which is a zombie story. Uh, characters of color as well. Um, mm. just, and the big thing with them is that they're a family company. And I don't mean their comics. I mean just the people that are in them are mm. a family company. Um, so that's, I feel, their biggest thing, their biggest hook. Family, and they have amazing T-shirts as well. The first character I knew about, from them was a character named Interceptor. He's a black football footballer, and he ends up getting the shield that Arthur had. Mm. And then you from the Lady of the Lake. So again, that's another story that ties into our theory of legend. Mm -hmm. Just great. Uh, There's another company that is out there. They are on that edge. They're right there, and I feel like they've just got a little bit more, and they're going to bust through as well. Mm. You know, I'm another indie comic book creator of color. Uh, the main stuff, J.D. Uh, Rosario is the guy that I know through them. He's like the the one that you see the most noticeable. But he lets everybody know, no, this is everybody. This is a group effort. You know, I felt it was just not just an opportunity for me to just shout out some indie publishers in general that have great comics out. Go check them out. Um, Unique Studios, that's Y-O-U-N-E-E-K Studios. And then we have Unstoppable Comics. Go check them out. They've got books in print and digital. They've got T-shirts. If you know me, you know I love my T-shirts, obviously. You're right. Go check these people, please. And if, uh, I'm Seriously. going to try to find the names. If Moose hasn't done it already, I'm going to try to find the the um, IG names and put them in the chat so you guys can check them out. Uh, Antonio, thank you so much. You know, here at Zion, we love the big guys and all that, but we are definitely also about the indie. So thank you for bringing us that indie recognition, man. I appreciate you. Always, sir. Thank you so very much. All right. And by the way, I think we'll talk more. We got to come up with like a salute at the end. Go beyond, you know what I mean? Like something to close out the, you know, oh. our chat. You know what I mean? Go beyond. Lit pick and beyond. S salute, brother. <laughs> Catch you later, man. Peace. All right. Have a good one, man. Thank you. Peace. Later. You heard it here, people. You saw it. Shout out to Miranda. You saw it here. We are going to have the Zion vegan spinoff show. Me and Antonio, we're going to be talking about different vegan products. We're going to be cooking, giving y'all vegan goodness. You're welcome. You don't have to ask, right? This is what we do. Beyond.
it'll catch on. Moles, let's get in here. <laughs> let's get in here, bro. Y'all, what y'all got? Don't don't do that. Don't be hateful. Don't be hateful. Leave that to Moles, all right? Leave that for leave that for uh Moles and and Seth, all right? Come on, man. Love We're my beyond people. And y'all saw the chat. Seth loved the Beyond Burger. Come on, now. Don't do that, Moles. Don't not the shares, man. Not the shares. Don't do that to me. <laughs> no, man. Sean, you, you there, Sean? Right here, sir. Okay, because I, I could only hear you for a little bit because you got a Sony voice because you and Antonio was talking some shit. All these out time, like, get on with it. I don't hear none of that. I don't want to hear none of it. Nobody asked for it. I didn't, we didn't ask for none of this. All right? <laughs> Jesus. What's the wrong with y'all? Like, every week y'all just get, like, what, what is, what's, what, what's the deal? What's the deal? What's the damn deal? What's the deal? If you, if you had a Beyond Burger, you wouldn't be so angry, my friend. Well, I give a damn. Right? No, boy, I ain't right? kidding. I, ain't, I didn't you give a damn with you and Beyond Burgers and all that shit. Why would you, you even, I didn't ask for none of this. I just hear trying to produce a down show. Or you talk about well, the Beyond Burger. This is what, yeah, I, I don't think he's like, oh, Beyond. I had a kid. What, what? You want to be like Toy Story 5 or something? You you can audition for that. You want to be like, what, your next toys? That toys for, for, for what? For your little girl or something? You, you want to be the next um, I'm Animosity, yes. Yes. I'm feeling, I'm feeling you hear me? It is negative. negative. Get on the show. Because we ain't having it there. I feel a lot of negative non-vegan hate coming through right here, right? It's really messing with my aura, you know what I mean? So we're going to keep the show moving. There's no damn aura. You have a light on top of you shining on you. That's why you look at that glow, fool. All right? Just, just get on the damn show. So, moving on. <laughs> let's get into... Um, let's go into... How does it look? How was it? How you feeling? Yeah. Now? Yeah? Was, That's good. Let's go and break that. Okay. Okay. I like to see that smile, boys. Okay. How does okay. it look? How was it? This is the segment where we talk about a show, a trailer that we saw something that's coming up. And right. how was it something that we actually saw? Um, in the how does it look category, there was a trailer that just that came out a few weeks ago. We're finally getting a chance to talk about it. It's called Flora and Ulysses. Mm -hmm. It is a movie coming out from the uh, from Disney. All all hail all hail the mighty mouse. Um, and it says it's uh, an imaginative and creative ten year old cynic never could have predicted that her little squirrel would be born anew as a superhero and have the uncanny knack for helping her and the lovable but broken people in her life. It's starring a young Matilda Lawler. Um, and it's set to be released February 19th of 2021. Uh, Laws, what would you think of this of this trailer, man? What do you think about this 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 movie that's coming up? It's for kids. Full stop. It's for kids, right? Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. You're not it's liking not that? You're not, you're, not, you're not feeling it's not, it? It's not, it's not me. Here's the thing, right? It is a kid's, we, sh we should let you know, it is, it is, looks like a kid movie. For those of you out there who have, who have children, this is probably, uh, you know, this is in their lane. They probably might have some stuff for the adults as well, but it's definitely a family kid's movie. Normally, I would stay as far away from this shit as possible, but I'm tempted to watch it more. If there's one thing I hate more than tie-dye shirts, it's children actors who can't act. I hate it. Can't stand it. All right. I don't care how long a movie is going to take. You do. You do. Your, you do. The, you take the time and you find you a child, a child that can act. All right. So you say every child that who wears a tie-dye shirt can't act. I hate tie-dye shirts as one thing that's separate, and I hate children who can't act. Now, if you have a child that can't act in a tie-dye shirt, that's the apocalypse right there. Get rid of them. But there's a line in this movie, in this trailer, there's a line in this trailer that the, the, the young actress, Matilda Lawler, that she says, and she said it so naturally, I was like, I want to see it just based off that one line. It was 
she's going to be a star. I'm calling it now. In the future, she's going to be an amazing actress. Um, it looks uh, it looks like a fun movie for kids. It, it has some. Um, it has one of my favorite comedians. I forget his name. He does this. Um, he does this. Uh, uh, improv show. Um, I would watch it. I would watch it. I might. You know what I mean? I'm not going. I may not come back on and review it, but um, I w- I think it would be a cute little fun movie, man. You know, one of these night, one of these days, you're chilling, just kind of pop it in or something. You know what I mean? That's me. All right. So it can't all be uber violence and death and stuff, man. You know, we got to recommend stuff for for the kids. We are we got to recommend stuff for the people with kids. All right. So no, that's true. Yeah, but it's just me. I'm like, there are certain things for kids I might watch, but I don't know. I, I'm I'm not invested in it as much. Okay. All right. Um. So moving on to our how was it category. We are doing our weekly breakdown of the amazing WandaVision. The WandaVision is doing something where they are, instead of, instead of filling us up and, and making us binge on all episodes, they're releasing it weekly, and I'm here mm-hmm. for it. I love it, I'm and here. we're going to keep doing it weekly till it's over. Moz, what's your take on this last episode? It makes sense. For mm. stop. Of everything okay. that was happening within the last three episodes, it started mm. to put pieces together. So we have like, what's happening with Wanda and Vision at the same time, and then we're ha- you're seeing what's happening on the outside of skirts of that, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I kind of like mentioned it yesterday on the, this is the end show that we had yesterday with the horsemen. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm just going to repeat a, a couple of things where I was that it's not, it's not going to spoil the territory, just saying. But um, for those who know what I'm talking about, and for those who don't know, Wanda is in a dream world or is some sort of um, field where it is in a hexagonal shape of a town and she is in a sitcom that goes from decade to get to, decade to decade with her quote unquote husband who is Vision. Now we all know Vision dead. So mm-hmm. we're wondering mm-hmm. what's happening. So this episode explains kind of what's happening to Wanda before mm-hmm. even giving a tidbit of what's happening before give you too much. Yes. Yeah. Like to keep you going. It I'm filled like, in hey. the blanks of the other exactly. episodes. You got to see it from a different perspective and exactly. see it from if you watched the third episode, it ended and this was in the trailer, the original trailer, so we're not spoiling anything, but you see yeah, some soldiers yeah. out there um and we see some from the perspective of these soldiers and Monica Rambeau, um, mm-hmm. for those of you who know who's the original Captain Marvel, um, mm-hmm. she one of the Captain uh, Marvels. Yes, well, one of the Captain Marvels. So she, um, she's featured heavily in this new episode four, um, and I can't wait for a spinoff with her because oh, oh my God, let me tell you, woo! I would give up Beyond Burgers for that woman. I said it. I said it. That would happen. That would have to happen. That's how. That's how much I'm in love. But it was. It is once again. You Marv, all hail Marvel. Marvel is the greatest. I said it. All right. They are untouchable when it comes to their series and their movies. Not the animation. DC got them in the animation. We all know that. Yeah. But. Yeah. The way they tied everything together, how it's all making sense, how it ties into the the, the, the Marvel Cinematic Universe is untouchable. I said it. Yeah, for sure. For sure. But if you're I, not I watching, healing. if you're not, not watching healing. WandaVision, Marvel. you're doing a disservice. It is and and this is this was a departure from the sitcom setup, like Moa said. And if you watch it, if you watch the first three episodes and you, you for the sitcom stuff, it's actually generally funny. This one was more in the real world, but it still mm-hmm. had comedic moments with your boy, um, Agent. Uh, who's the FBI agent? Um, uh, yeah, um, Jimmy Woo, Agent Jimmy Woo, and yes. um, RC. Yes. Yeah, like Mikey said it earlier. Um, those those two were their, their banter was it was terrific. Even though this is probably the first time they've probably met, because 
if you know Jimmy Woo was actually in Ant Man, and obviously Darcy was in Thor. So now that Darcy is here, and you have Jimmy Woo is here, because like, hey, you have like two, like it's kind of like peanut butter and jam actually finally get together. Mm -hmm. Simple mm -hmm. as that. Um, we going out. Uh, uh... You know what? Much respect to everybody. Uh, Mr. Too Sweet, Dr. Andy, you ain't here talking about you a DC man. Come over, sir. All right? We got plenty of room for you over here on the Marvel ship. You're welcome. We were waiting for you. We, we are accepting recruits. All right? So, you know, that, that, DC, that DC ship sinking is the Titanic. All right? We over here on hovercrafts, fam. All right? <laughs> Come on. Now. Get your life together, sir. I don't want to be that good. Um... I'm I'm here for it. One division next week. Can't wait to see how this this goes. Moving on to our um, next segment. But you know what? Before we get to our next seg segment, you know, most you know what we want to do. I want to do some trivia. What's that? We didn't do some. We didn't oh, do. Cool. We didn't do any trivia. Nah, we didn't do any trivia. Didn't get to do any trivia. Yeah. Um. The way it works is that we're going to ask you two questions. Um. We have. We're going to pick two winners each. All you got to do is be the first two people to put your answers into the comment, into the chat, and boom, you win. Easy breezy, lemon squeezy. All right? Get my little notepad here. Um, I feel that I'm going to keep it light on, on them today, Moose. I'm going to keep them light on them. It's going to be easy for y'all, man. All right? right? Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Uh, first question. We're gonna keep it. We're gonna keep it one division. We're gonna keep it within the Marvel universe, right? Um, there's an agency in one division, but the name is Sword. Who can tell me what the acronym Sword stands for? What does Sword stand for in I the Marvel you, universe? I bet. I bet you my life savings. Mikey's gonna answer first. Let's go. I'll take that bet because Mike. I saw Mikey come in. He's good, but. I don't know if you're fast enough. You know what I mean? We got some. We got some strong people in here today, fam. We got some. We got some contenders. Let's. Start. We're gonna see. We're gonna see. All right. What does the acronym Sword stand for in the Marvel universe? Uh, let me see. I'm just reading the comments as we uh as we wait. But I have to be the Marvel. The DC what? Guy. Wow! Give me my money. Give me my money. Give me my money. Give me my money, Sean. How do you do it? Pass uh, after we, you know, we get, we can study bike under the table and stuff, and then we, we, I did. Give me my money, fam. I didn't bet you my life, my life savings. All right. I said so my life suck savings. An suck an egg. All right. No, you bet, you bet, you gonna end your sex, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> and you definitely give me and that shit. Damn it, Mikey! How do you do it? That is. That, wait, 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 we gotta see if they got any other winners. Well, back in there again, Rell, yo. Rell, Rell, we got to Rell. Rell. Uh, we got our two winners, Mikey, sure, and Rel. Now, here's out full disclosure: I'm a few weeks behind on the gifts, but I'm getting stuff together because one of the one of the prizes that I do is that um, I, I I like to give bonus artwork, so I could just give you all a random post that I have, but I'm creating some some actual new artwork as part of the prizes, so that's been a hold up. So, Mikey. And and Rel, you are our two winners for the first question in the trivia. Sentient World Observation and Response Department is the correct answer. Um, Indeed. Let's go into the uh, let's go into the uh, second question. I don't want y'all to get intimidated by Mikey. Like you know, he can't win every week, man. You know, um, I just seen it was something like that. I knew Mikey was going to be first. I don't know. I don't know how he does it. Oh, and special, so, you know, I'll talk about that first. Here's your second question. This is an easy one. This is a, we're going to keep it easy for them, fam. Scarlet Witch was first introduced as a member of what team? In the Marvel comics, Scarlet Witch was first introduced as a member of what team? Let's go. Mikey, Mikey, and... Real walk again. I bet you. I got to give Tracy bonus points just for that uh, acronym he just brought down. That's hilarious, fam. That is well done. That is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even hear it. I can't even oh hear it. Oh, my God. I can't even hear it. 
That's incredible. Yes. <laughs> That's yes. Yes. I give you that one, yes. right? You, you, on, I see how this day going, right? I, I got Seth on my case, Moe's on my case, Tracy on my case. Y'all win for today. I done, right? The universe is for you, fam. It's all right. It's all right. I got my days. You know what I mean? I know my days. Um, uh, let's see. Let's see who's going to win. Let's see who's going to win. Whoa. I see one winner. I see a winner. I'm going to say what the, what the answer is. Y'all got to figure yeah, it out. I, I, I'm going to say you either. Know, I'm people, not going to say either. Some people, they like to wait till the person get the answer. And they'll be like, I got it too. No, you didn't. Yeah, no, you didn't. You know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Let's see. Let's see who's able to tell us what team this Scarlet Witch first appear in in the Marvel Universe. All right? Yeah, let's go. All right? Come on, people. This should be easy. Listen, y'all, y'all, I see some more winners, but y'all, y'all won. In the first question, we want to give some person the uh, another chance, all right? Somebody else, let us know who... What team did Scarlet Witch first appear in in Marvel Comics? All right, who's got it? We're gonna see. We're gonna separate the movie fans from the real comic butt heads. That's what we're going to do. Tracy, that is correct. You are a second winner. Chrome ninety six. Tracy, it is the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. That's when she first appeared with Quicksilver and Magneto. You won. There we go. Congrats to our winners of the trivia. I'm you going sure. to be working on getting these prizes out to you. Moors, just so you know, remember mm -hmm. last week when we did the um the trivia game show, the first Zion game yeah. show. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um yeah. I have recruited Mikey to be our special games master for the next trivia game show. So on the next one, I, I don't know I, when I you're humbly, gonna do it again. I humbly I humbly accept that, sir. It is it is proven to be a good choice, and mm -hmm. um, I know Mikey will never ever disappoint in giving us questions on this on right. on the flight. So whenever so, yes, you are, we are ready, going to be, we are going to be competing ready, ready, ready. soon. Yeah, and he is going to be our games master on a future episode of the Zion Game Show. Um, so look out for that. And he had the nerve to ask me what level of questions and coming at me already with some hard, hard shit. I was like, yo, Mikey, you mean chill like, out. You mean, you mean like some much. most level shit? Like yes, the ones on I that actually level. usually... Good. Yeah. That nonsense. That Good. silliness. Good. <sighs> Whatever. Awkward. We're going to keep it moving because y'all know the deal, people. It is the last Sunday of the month and that means we are going live with Moe's after this show with his... Um, um, the after show where you get the after on the show. To the after show. So we're going to keep it moving, y'all. Um, let's go into the artist spotlight, Moors. Let's go into the artist spotlight. Yes, sir. We like to shout out um, different creators who we feel that deserve a spotlight being shined on them. Um, I'm going to put mine in here first, Moors, while you get yours together. The first, the first. Uh, person receiving the spotlight is Concrete Comics. It is a publishing company. They do oh, nice. some amazing work. Um, they are, for those of you who, who are looking for diversity, they're Nubian creators uh, putting out Nubian characters. All right? Um, they, they got a bunch of titles. They got, they have a steady stream. Sh uh, they've shown a steady stream of success and um, hidden and providing content, all right? So this isn't a splash in the pan type of thing. Concrete Comics, they have been doing it now for a while. I've met them in person, amazing group of guys that are brilliant shit. and hardworking. Go check them out. My second recommendation, the second person to get the spotlight, I want to give, this is a long, this is a long uh, name here. Um, it should pop up. Lost Children of Andromeda. Lost Children of Andromeda. Yes. Um, this is a sci-fi novel series um, created, written by Jason Primrose. Um, he has a second book that he's about to drop that is, he's going to be doing a Kickstarter for that soon. I, I, when I say soon, I mean, so I, if not a matter of days, definitely within the next few weeks. 
he's going to be doing a Kickstarter. Um, I've, I, I haven't read the book personally, only a few excerpts. I've seen the artwork that he has for it. He's created these, um, he's, he's commissioned artists to create these amazing posters that show you the characters of the world. It looks incredible. If the full story is anything like the artwork and the characters, it's, it's, it's amazing. Um, go check them out. Judge for yourself. Lost Children right. of Andromeda. Moles, who you got? Yes, sir. So my first pick would be, I don't know if I probably said it before, but we're going to find out now. Um, it is Dan Duncan. He is a comic book artist, and he because uh, he's done some like stuff at Marvel also, a Marvel animation and storyboard comic art. Um, he's done some stuff with, with them also, so he's been drawing for quite a while, as you can see. Mm -hmm. And his work is dope. Work is like really, really dope because like he got that that Japanese style, that sleek looking. I don't know what type of style is it. It's kind of like I I'm trying to point point the artist style, because you know sometimes you mimic that type of feel for it. Mm -hmm. So he has that style that looks really cool, and I love to see it. And um, the other person I want to highlight is Jay Kim. Yes, I said it. Jay Kim. Okay. That's this guy's name. Um, that guy also, he's like a supervisor, director, on Pacific Rim animated series and then uh, legendary pictures. So he also yeah. does some other stuff there too. Um, it's really amazing. And uh, again, his style is really, really cool. I like it personally. I find mm -hmm. him like every time. So I was like, yes, those are my two. Uh, those are Sean's two. So All right. go and check him out and, you know, make sure they follow and like and see what they're up to because whatever content they have, going on just check it out support as much as always yes definitely definitely um moving on we're going to touch on our versus challenge every week we here at zion we we pick two characters against each other that you may not normally see um last week we based it on something that you are going to see king kong versus godzilla and mm -hmm. we put up a poll every week and um, we asked you to tell us who would you pick in the, the epic clash of monsters, Kong versus Godzilla, Kong loss, Kong loss. I had King Kong, Moles, you had See? Godzilla. Yep, told you. People would Godzilla. definitely look at that. Uh, but again, this does not per, uh, perceive of the movie was going to happen. I just saying right. that well, the but Kong's going to win. So you know, it looks like it. That's true. It's Looking sick. at the trailer for three or four times, like, because mm, Kong, you know, he got an advantage of the uh, he because it's funny enough because they're doing the whole um, um, and in Infinity War thing, whereas that you know, uh, where the scene where Thanos was there and he's like got this beam, and then Thor had the, had the, the like Star Stormbreaker, and then it lands in it because apparently it was, like Kong was actually having Stormbreaker in his hand, and then you know. Godzilla with the TV. Kong won't give Godzilla that word. Yeah, yeah. Kong won't give him that word. Especially that right hand that he gave him on, on the, on the, um, was on the bridge or something. He has opposable thumbs. He got opposable yeah. thumbs. Kong wins, right? 50%, 56% of y'all chose Godzilla, but that's okay. Part of the weekly challenge is that we also, the, sorry, the, the verses is that it's also part of a weekly challenge as an art challenge. Right, so we challenge you to draw one of the characters in the battle, or both of them. You know what I mean. However, you want to do it. Um, on next week's poll, we have an idea that I've been thinking about for a while, Moles. It is my man Daredevil versus Yay. Shredder. Daredevil versus Ooh. Shredder is the next versus. Talk to me, Moles. Ooh. Who you got? Who y'all got? Who y'all hey, got? I've been asking. I've been asking. Yeah. I can draw this. I can just draw that. Like, I can't. Wait. I have to draw this. I have to draw this, man. I've been thinking about this for years. Who you got, Moz? Are you asking me? I ain't, I ain't give a damn who I got today. I just You're want I'm going to fuck out. I swear I'm going to be punk. I'm going to be punk bitch tonight. I am care. I don't okay. care. 
Oh. I don't care who wins or not. I'm just gonna leave you like, on this. It's like, fam, that is a sick. I got Daredevil. You know how I feel sick about my man Daredevil. I. It's true. Come on now. Should not say that. But, is tough. but if I had to choose. Oh boy, here we go. Here we go. If I had to choose. Hey, I'll go with Shredder. Just for fun. See, I knew it. You just got to pause. That's all it is. You just, uh, okay. just got to be that guy, right? Uh, yes. Because you want to be this guy who's vegan and telling me, like, Beyond Burger, just eggs. Beyond Burger, just eggs. Beyond Burger, mwah, just eggs. <laughs> like, if we need a damn commercial for that shit. So well, I can be this guy tonight. A different song. When we get endorsed by Beyond Burger and Just Eggs, you are gonna be singing the different tune. And you bring them. You better wear the shirt. Bring them. You better wear the shirt and the bandana. And wear the damn shirt. I ain't wearing the damn shirt. You can't get me wear a Beyond Burger shirt. I, I know, man. That's the that is the challenge that's coming up. We're gonna put up the official poll next, uh, probably tomorrow or by Tuesday, and then y'all can vote officially on the Zion page. And for all the artists out there, get to join. Keep up with the challenges. If you're a writer, or you know, if you can write. You can write something too. You know what I mean? It's all inclusive over here. Uh, moving on. Oh boy, here go here goes Seth. Um, how much time we got, Moz? I want to make sure we get out of here for you. Sure. Um, uh, what's on the table that family doing? What you want to see? You want to? You want to? You want to do them or we we, we, we we do the final zone and then we we close. Cause... All right, all right, all right. Yeah, let's get into yeah. it. Um, normally I would have the Phantom Zone music right here, but I wasn't prepared. Okay. But uh, the Phantom Zone, this is a segment <laughs> for Sean versus a wet napkin. Tracy, you're hidden today, fam. You got it. I, I'm, I, oh, I ordered this. Um, the Phantom Zone is a segment where we, we, we take something that we are fed up with and we get rid of it. All right, we say, hey, you are out of here. Wonder Woman 1984, you're gone. From the cat, you're gone. Hey, don't even talk about that. That's some trash. That's classic. Um, and on today's episode of the Phantom Zone, we are tossing in resurrection of comic book characters. Oh, Moles, you want to get in there, man? You want to you wanna set it off, man? Listen, I mentioned this earlier, right? As mm -hmm. one of them. Um, as going back to the topic we were talking about, monumental moments in comics i had mentioned mm -hmm. about the death of superman yeah right cool mm -hmm. um i had no qualms where eyes that he was going to be resurrected because but hey we all know that he was gonna come back at some point mm -hmm. sure mm -hmm. but it seems like he since he resurrected everybody got to die and get resurrected too so what sense did that make to me? None. It just it, it just seems still old. Let the carcass dead and just go ahead. All I'm saying, Superman died, Flash died, Batman died. I don't know if one woman ever did it. But like Spider Man, Captain America, um, the X Men at some point, the Avengers, everybody the had to no. just come back. They can't die, fam. The X Men, no, I thought that's where he was going. Well, that's no, where Part of their whole well, thing is that then, no, then, brought back. then, then, because right. they, they died and come back because you know because they got a little secret that happened. It's like, hey, uh, they died. Now. How are they supposed to be alive? But we found out how they get to like, be alive. Uh, but again, it's like he was reborn and stuff like that. I'm like, the, the fuck you doing? Like seriously, stop. It, it gets old. It gets stale. It gets like just leave it. Oh, I am saying right now, right? If Uncle Ben is raised from the dead. I am sorry, Marvel. I am out. You already got Gwen Stacy running around already. Go, you make her go spider. Go, let, let, let's, let's keep it as that. If you ever resurrect Uncle Ben and Captain Stacy, well, you're at it too. And the dog, because they, they, they had a dog at some point. If mm -hmm. you resurrect any of those, I swear to you, I'm gone. Mikey, get out of here pushing Invincible, all right? Okay, I'm sick of it. Um, yeah, the whole the whole resurrection thing. As as an adult, no. Um, but you can see it as a you can step outside and you can see it as a business move. I get it. You know what I mean? These guys aren't going to ever stay dead. 
you know what I mean, the top tiers. We can we can no. we can we can scream to the cows come home. But for my thing is no, you can't any it seems like no comic book character is able to stay dead. We gotta be able to separate that. We gotta be able to say, hey, what is the story? You know what I mean? Is or, or you know what? Just like breathe, most no, no, it's like people coming back months later. You know what I mean? A year later. Months later. It's like you know, you can, you know, can you save that? Let's bring, you know, maybe even bring about years from now or something like that. Give Please, us time. Let, 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 give us time. Please, just give but, us time. Yeah. But, um, again, so, like, who needs that? Like, do we want to see Jarrell just happen to reappear in a Superman comic? No. Yeah. No. So, yeah. So, for all the creators out there, you know, that's, that's something that I feel y'all feel the same way. We tired of it. You know what I mean? Do better. And I know, I know about you boys in my universes. That's one of the things I want to say. It's gonna hurt, but yo, if the dead did that, so that's that's it. Um, peoples, we are at the end of our show. We are keeping it tight on time because right after this, Moz is going to be going live on his IG with the variety after show, and that's where you get to come on and talk about all the stuff that you, you want to talk about. You know, is, is there something on the show you want to discuss? Maybe a monumental moment in comments you didn't get to talk about here that you want to talk about there. Yeah, sure. Moz is the kind of person, he's sneaky. He's pulling you in at random, too, and do all kind of shit. So, look out for that. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, before we get out of here, um, I just want to um, say, please... Um, make sure that you spread the world of uh, of Zion. We we got some stuff that we are planning to coming up for y'all. Moles and the Horsemen. Shout out to Ron, Jessica, Ian, Cam. They just debuted their show yesterday. It was amazing on um, YouTube Live. Um, so uh, that's the most important thing. Moles, if you could take that in, if you could find the link for me, we have a YouTube page, people. So Zion yes, has a YouTube do. page. And uh, we're going to be putting the all the old episodes of the IG Live. We're going to be moving them over to the YouTube, and then we're going to be showcasing the end. This is the end. Moses' other show, which is the last Saturday of every month, that's going to be on the on the YouTube channel. And then we're going to have more content coming up. So stay tuned. Please go follow YouTube. We have to have a uh, um, um, hundred subscribers before we can get the. Um, the customized YouTube page. So do us a favor. Yes, go follow that. Um, as always, um, I want to thank all the people who are working behind the scenes and making the show what it is. Glenn, Prime Minister, Jason. Um, shout out to our correspondents, Seth, Antonio. Next week, we're going to be having um, special guest, Aaron Beatty, who's going to be talking about Harry Harry. Harry mm -hmm. Harry. All right. It's a mouthful, but mm -hmm. look out for that. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, it, is, is it is a it monthly sounds... challenge, kind of like um, is a monthly challenge like uh, wait name busy one was Ink October. October is a monthly challenge like Inktober, but the thing is, is focused on Nubian characters, black characters. Correct. All right, it Correct. starts February first, which is tomorrow. Tomorrow, okay? um, so, Moz, if you could put that page in there for me, or I could put it. It's, uh, Tag it quickly. Heru Eri. All right. Oh, it says it can't mention it. I don't know what's up, but um, That's you know, weird. I'll okay. just anyway. I'll just type this in here. Yeah. No, don't autocorrect me. Don't you autocorrect me, phone? That's how you spell it. Um, go check it out. Uh, I'm going to be part of that. I'm going to be drawing some stuff. I'm going to be inking over some pencils from uh, a former guest. I can't share, and um. Yeah, we want to thank you for joining us as always. And Moz, anything, fam? Well, as usual, uh, since it's the end of the month, stay tuned. I'll be coming to you soon. So, yes. Yeah. Yes, man. So, send us out. So, yeah, that's what we send out. So, as usual, be stay safe, stay creative, stay you. And I'll see you all soon in the next couple of seconds. And go beyond! Jesus Christ. <laughs>